and welcome to Community Matters. This podcast is a public service brought to you by Saline County. Our goal is to keep you in the know with all the programs, services, and opportunities provided by our local county government. I'm your hostess, Melissa McCoy, Saline County and Saline County Health Department Communications Coordinator. Today, we'll be chatting with Saline County Health Department Director and Public Health Officer, Jason Tiller. Hi, Jason. Hi, Melissa. So this is our first podcast uh, as we have begun to transition to a new reporting schedule. So we'll talk a little bit about what you can expect from us and a little bit about what we're for, what we're looking for from you. And of course, we brought Jason on here, and so we'll talk a little bit about COVID and hopefully transition to some other exciting things that are happening (laughs) as far as health in our community is concerned. So, Jason, let's just, let's talk COVID. Let's get COVID out of the way. I I wish it were that easy, but okay, let's do that. (laughs) All right, let's give it a whirl. (laughs) So talk to me a little bit about... um, where are we at with COVID? How how many people do we have vaccinated? Um, do we still need to be testing if we've been vaccinated? All that good stuff. Yeah, sure. So, you know, there's a lot of things out there right now that, that seem like it's unclear whether it's this or that. So um, when it comes down to it, really, everybody should still consider testing if they're symptomatic, even if they've been vaccinated, because you know, there is that possibility. So we really want people to still get tested. There are plenty of places to get tested um, and make sure that you are good to go, that you aren't, you know, giving the the virus to somebody else. Um, The same thing, getting vaccinated, and there are still plenty of places to get vaccinated, um, will help uh, keep the disease from causing severe symptoms if you should get it. Uh, It will also help with keeping you from spreading it to other people. Um, And these are all just part of the overall uh, different things that people can do, really, to uh, try and prevent the spread of COVID. Um, You know, as far as kind of what all is happening here, we're still seeing cases uh, every day. Um, You know, we are still seeing some hospitalizations. We're still seeing some deaths. The vaccine rate is going up although it's a little bit slower than it had been and, and a little bit slower than we would definitely like it to see that. Um, but we are kind of in a place right now where it's just um, this kind of low-level you know, disease that's everywhere still, um, and we really want to keep it as low as possible um, while we still try and get as many people vaccinated, which going back to where I started it, which is why it's also important to continue to get tested too. Right, so if someone wants to know where they can get tested, how, how do they find that information? Yeah, so um, a couple of ways. One of them is they can uh, check the website, gogettested.com. That still shows where there are testing sites. Um, and, you know, those testing sites are free. You just you go uh, you, you look at the contact information and set up a time, go get tested. Um, otherwise, you can call your primary care provider. You can call the emergency room, uh, urgent care, um, different places like that uh, and be able to set up um, uh, an appointment to get tested. Um, This is especially important if you may have been exposed to somebody that's had COVID, um, if you have symptoms of COVID, um, regardless of whether you have any kind of underlying health conditions or whether you're in relatively good health. If you have symptoms or you've been exposed to somebody and develop symptoms, it's extremely important that you get tested so that we know for sure. Okay, and how about vaccines? If I'm ready to get my vaccine, I've made that decision, I'm ready to take the leap, where do I go to find that information? Yeah, so for a while we were using the uh, vaccinefinder.org website, and that's transitioned Mm -hmm. over to vaccines.gov. But you know what? It's got the same information. Um, It's all part of the same uh, database of uh, stuff that tells you Uh, where you can get the vaccine at, what type a certain place um, has, if they have it in stock, how to contact them, how to make appointments, um, you know, and a few other things, too. So vaccine is free. 
Um, Sometimes places might ask for your insurance card to charge a small administration fee to your insurance, but it doesn't cost you anything out of your pocket. Nobody should be telling you that you have to pay to get the vaccine. So there's no copay. No, there's like no that. copay. There's no hey, we'll bill you later. There's no. There, there's none of that. The vaccine for every individual getting vaccinated is absolutely free. Fantastic. And should I be holding out for a particular type of vaccine no. if I'm a certain age or does it matter? No. The more people we get vaccinated, the better. The faster we get them vaccinated, the better. Um, the We still say that the best vaccine you can get is the first one that you can get, regardless of if the, uh, the Pfizer, uh, Moderna, or the Johnson & Johnson. The only kind of caveat I, I should say, though, is that for those that are under 18, since the Pfizer is the only one that they can get, and right now still it's only 16 and 17 year olds that are authorized, um, so they do have to get that one. Okay. Other than that, for everybody else, just get the first one that you can get. And they're all about equal effectiveness. I don't need to be concerned about that. No, I mean there's some there's some percentage differences in effectiveness, but overall, they're all going to protect you fairly equally as far as uh, helping you from. Um, uh, becoming symptomatic or developing symptoms or spreading it to somebody else or anything like that should you come in contact with somebody that uh, is COVID positive. Okay. And previously we had talked about our goal for Saline County being to vaccinate. First, we wanted to vaccinate 70% of the adult adult population. And then um, now we're saying 70% of the overall population. Can you kind of clarify Correct. that for me? Yeah. So originally, when the only uh, populations that we could vaccinate were those over 18, it made sense to have a target of 70% of those over 18. Um, as uh, another age group was authorized, when we got down to that, that uh, uh, phase five of the vaccine plan, which a lot for 16 and 17 year olds, well, it didn't make sense anymore to say, we're only going to count those over 18 that got vaccinated. So that means we also had to change a little bit about how we report how much or how many people are getting vaccinated. So now we are reporting it as the total population, um, which then puts that in line too with anywhere else that you look at uh, what percentage of a population has been vaccinated. They're usually basing it off of the total population. Okay, okay. So how about masks? I know that is a hot issue right now. Everyone has... In more than one way. Yep. Everyone has a pretty strong opinion. Uh, what What are your thoughts, your feelings, recommendations, anything? Yeah. So mask, again, they are part of the overall set of strategies to try and control COVID. Um, you know, if you're going to be first and foremost, if there is a, an ordinance or a regulation or anything like that, either where you are uh, with the business or location that you're going into, first and foremost, you need to follow that. Secondly, though, if not, if you're going to be in a, a crowded place, um, then you need to make sure that you're masking up, especially if it's inside. Um, if you're going to be around people that are not vaccinated and you're not vaccinated, then you need to make sure that you're masking up. Um, If you are going to be uh, around some of our vulnerable populations. So Mm -hmm. um, quite honestly, if you're going to go visit grandma and grandpa at the nursing home, most of them are still have some sort of rules in place um, for visitors to mask up. Again, it's, you know, it's these multiple layers of protection um, that help with trying to defeat the spread of or reduce the spread of this disease. Right. You've talked in the past about the Swiss cheese yeah. analogy. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it, it, when you think about a piece of Swiss cheese and each slice has holes in it, but as you stack those up, those holes get filled in and it becomes stronger altogether. Um, so in the pandemic model of defense or of uh, virus defense, or even, you know, defense in depth that uh, um, the more layers of defense that you have, so in our case, masking, vaccination, um, isolation and quarantine, um, you know, staying home when you're sick, testing, uh, and there's several more of them. But, you know, the more layers that you are using, the better off your pandemic defense is going to be, not only with the current case where we're dealing with COVID, 
But if we were to be dealing with any type of uh, uh, severe infectious disease, whether it's an outbreak of meningitis in a college dorm um, or an outbreak of measles um, in a school or some other setting, the same principles apply really regardless of the type of disease. So masking is just one layer, and those are all those masking ordinances are decided by the commissioners. The city commissioners for Salina, correct. Okay, and then vaccination is another layer of that Swiss cheese model. Yep. But you get kind of some other perks when you get vaccinated as well, correct? Yep. So here's a couple of other things that come along with getting vaccinated. So if you are exposed to somebody that's COVID positive, and as long as you are not showing any symptoms, you don't have to quarantine. Um, if you travel somewhere that there is currently a uh, travel quarantine uh, restriction in place, uh, for instance, like right now, Colorado has one of those where if you travel there and you are unvaccinated, uh, you have to uh, quarantine for two weeks when you come back. Um, you know, that might really affect your ski trip, you know, in the next couple of weeks before the snow is gone. But if you're fully vaccinated, you can go out to Colorado, you can go on your ski trip, you can come back. And the only thing that you really need to do is just watch yourself and make sure that you don't develop any symptoms from your travels. Otherwise, you go to about your normal daily work, school, and other activities. Okay, awesome. So getting your vaccine protects you, but it also lets you just live your life with a little more normalcy. Right, and that's what most people want to do. They want to be able to live their life with some normalcy. And getting vaccinated getting tested. These are all ways to help us get back to that. Awesome. So moving, transitioning away from COVID for the purposes of this podcast, but not Absolutely. for the overall world. <laughs> uh, what else is going on at the health department? What do you, um, what do you want our listeners to know about? Well, so many of you may have used a lot of our, our services prior to the pandemic, such as our uh, clinic services for your family planning to get birth control. Um, if you should unfortunately need to be checked or have a, a STI and need to be screened, those are all uh, very confidential uh, uh, exams and, and appointments. Um, we also do your childhood immunizations. If you have a child that's <clears throat> going to be starting into school or as many are getting ready to graduate and be going to college in the fall and need to get their shots updated, we do those things as well. Uh, we are also one of the few health departments left in the state that actually provide uh, home health care services to uh, homebound seniors. Um, and so we service the population uh, really with our even our uh, maternal child health and the Becoming a Mom education programs that we've done in the past and that during the pandemic we continue to do virtually. So we had all of that online so people could attend. So we really do service the lifespan of people from before they're born all the way through to uh, the end of their life. Now, many of our services had been either reduced or had to be put on hold because of the pandemic, which was unfortunate. Um, and we did also find creative ways to try and continue some of those during the pandemic. But we are also at this point now opening many of those back up. So if you are looking for or you need service or you need birth control, you need uh, education about your uh, new baby that you're getting ready to have, um, you want to open a daycare. You know, we have the staff that does the licensing and education and the inspections for that kind of stuff. You know what? If you are newly pregnant and you need uh, WIC benefits that may provide uh, milk and cheese and things like that for you as a pregnant mother to help with keeping a healthy pregnancy or even after the baby's born and you need formula. I mean, all of those services are here. All you got to do is just give us a call and we can help you get connected. And if there's something that we don't do that you're looking for, then my staff is always happy to help to try and get you connected with whoever in the community uh, provides the service that you need or that you're looking for. So it sounds like the health department offers a lot of services that people are maybe not, not using or unaware of. And 
COVID certainly didn't solve any problems. No, COVID, you know, certainly threw a wrench into a lot of things. Um, you know, there was a lot of great work that people did uh, prior to the pandemic. There was a lot of community service that they did before the pandemic. And that work and that community service continued throughout the pandemic and still continues. Um, and we want people to know that the only thing that we have ever been here for is to serve the community. And that's what our overall mission has been. And that's what it will continue to be. Well, excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming on our show and being our first guest on Community Matters. Thank you. We are just about out of time. We're going to try to keep these to around 15 minutes. Once again, this is Jason Tiller, Saline County Health Officer, and I'm Melissa McCoy, and this is Community Matters. <laughs>